praise Yahuwah, Shabbat, Shalom. What a beautiful day to rest. Praise Yahuwah, we thank you, Father, for leading us in paths of righteousness. For giving us the wisdom, the understanding, the knowledge, the discernment to be successful for the kingdom, not in the world. That you've showed us and continue to show us the difference between that which is functional and that which is dysfunctional. Things that we've been reared in and trained in and have experienced that would cause us to be dysfunctional in our lives. That we might, you might, make those hard places soft. That we would come to the understanding to be the people that you want us to be in the last days. Except in discipline where discipline is needed and realizing where the tricks of the enemy do lie. We love you. I love you, Father. Praise Yahuwah. Praise Yahuwah. Oh, what a great day to rest. You may hear a little chicken in the background. He's, he's trying to grow up. Uh, cute little guy. Today we're going to talk about and continue on with Yope. And we are looking at the second of the six distresses and in seven no evil strikes you. Let me see if I can get that all read because we're going to actually cover this whole part here. And again, I know, I know these first four here are the first four. But as we get down into here, well, maybe the first five right here. You know what? I think these are the last couple here. But as we get there, we'll see what Yahuwah reveals. But today we're going to look at the battle from the power of the sword. So I want to talk a little bit about, I didn't really talk about this last time before we started. and So I'm going to talk about it just real quick first. And Eliphaz, look, blessed is the man whom Eloah does reprove. So do not despise the discipline of the Almighty. For he bruises, but he binds up. He smites, but his hands heal. That's very true. Did you ever say he was disciplining Yob for something? No. Did all these things that were happening in the manner that they're happening, him allowing S. Satan to do this, going to benefit Yob to work out the last little bit of what he needs to work out of himself in the future? Yes. But Eliphaz has no clue what's going on except what Satan has put in him from his vision. So Eliphaz, because Satan never left the picture via Satan, has consistently pressed on Job that Job is being punished for something. Again, while Job must have had some sin at some times in his life, and I'm not saying he didn't ever have sin again. This is not what Yahuwah stated was going on here. Go ahead and try him. See if you can get him to curse me. Or see if he really is a member of the family of heads that will be in the resurrection. This was to show Eob would not curse the name of Eloah no matter what happened. And am I saying he... Of course he was upset. Of course he had feelings. Of course he was hurt. Of course he was distraught. Which of us wouldn't be? We've seen people interviewed on the news come out of a fire. They were the only one alive. Um, tornado, etc., etc. It's coming. It is going to happen. But in the midst of this, the last bit of pride 
was worked out of Eob. Am I saying he never had a bad thought or, or it never entered his brain again? No. But now he was able to fully recognize it. And what a beautiful picture that is for each of us to get out from between our own two ears, huh, Steph? So, this section of seven, actually six distresses and seven no evil strikes you, <clears throat> is what Yahuwah will deliver us from unto eternal life. At least, at least this is what it speaks of in Yob. It may happen in the physical. It may not. We may be saved from dying by the sword in the physical. We may not. But it cannot take out our life eternally. So, if we are part of the first resurrection remnant, we will lose our life here. Maybe physically, but definitely from the head of this world. And save it unto eternity because the second death has no power over those in the first resurrection. So, I just I wanted to cover that real quick. I didn't talk about it last time, you know. We know the scriptures, you know, do not despise the day of discipline, and he disciplines those whom he loves. And this is all a very true statement. And Eliphaz, of course, is mixing the truth with, we've seen a, some lie that he put in there, and putting things onto someone else that don't belong there, nothing that Yahuwah ever spoke, as Satan this whole time is trying to get him to curse the name of Aloha. And of course that word curse came from being in the family of heads. It's the same word as bless. And we talked about that back, I think it was in Job chapter 1. So, now that we've, that I said that, and if we're being, well let me, uh, now I guess I got some more on my soapbox. If we're being disciplined for something, we need to realize, we need to beg for discernment. What is this from, Yahuwah? What is this from? Is there something I need to work out? Am I, did I do something I need to be punished for? Or that, you know, has a, let me say, has a consequence, be punished, however you want to say it, okay? Or is there something that's been ingrained in me that um, needs to be worked out? So, it's scarcity of food, he shall redeem you from death. And we talked about the physical and the spiritual of that last time. And in battle from the power of the sword. So battle is H4421 in the Strongs. And it is Malachama <coughs> right here. Of course, it comes from Lechem, which we all know as bread. The action is to fight. The concrete is bread. Flour and water are mixed together and kneaded. Also war in the sense of fighting with the bread when kneading. So, I mean, that, could, that should paint a lot of pictures for you. Um, we're not really going to talk too much about bread. We just want to come at the aspect of the battle and the war. And there is a fight going on. And this word right here should be, let's put it right in there, war. Um, there's battle going on. It's between flesh and spirit. And the enemy wants to take you out in both ways. He's told us so on videos you've probably seen on guidestones that you probably just saw got torn down. Um, you know, if you watch any alternative news, you know that he wants to take you out physically, but he wants to take you out spiritually, first and foremost. So he's gunning he's he's gunning for those that would be deceived if that were possible if they weren't in the family of heads there's a short video back on here um i think it's called is it possible to be deceived i can't remember 
And there's another one, it might be more than one, it might just be one on the family of heads. Because that's what we see. Okay, I'm going to stop here and say it, I guess. The whole world is led astray. The whole world is deceived. And so they wouldn't be on the mark and be intimate with him at the time that he's revealed. Those are what the Hebrew letters say. But it says even the elect, same word, would be led astray, would be deceived. I'm pretty sure it's the same word. If possible, it may be a different word. I can't remember now, but I can remember the if possible. If possible actually traces back to if they weren't warriors in the family of heads. Same thing as watch and see. Yope's going to curse your name. Okay. And in battle from the power of the sword. So this word power is H3027 in the ancient Hebrew lexicon, or in the Strong's. In the ancient Hebrew lexicon by Benner, it's 1211 AN. Here's the N, it's a hand. At the A, part of the root line, the concrete is hand. With the hand, one can throw away or grab hold, kill or heal, make or destroy. So with your hands, or in the physical, you can do tob, good, or evil, ra'ah. Sometimes, for us, that should be matching what's coming out of our mouth. For the enemy, it, what they're doing might not match what's coming out of their mouth. It may match what's coming out of their mouth because it's all dysfunctional. For the enemy, it's all dysfunctional. Okay? We need to be all matching words and actions. Because this has power. There is power in the sword physically to kill you and spiritually to kill you. Either to kill the flesh, because Yahuwah wants to kill your flesh spiritually, or it's going to be all twisted up and you're, and you're going to spiritually be killed because you want to save your life here I hope I got that all right I didn't twist something up there because I sure didn't mean to so it comes from the two letter parent root or harmony a yod which is that's what this is the yod and the dal it's actually the letter and I want you to note here this is a whole arm and it's the whole arm. I'm just going to leave it at that. Maybe we'll do a study on that. Maybe right hand and forehead. Maybe right hand looks like that when you trace it back. The action is throw. The concrete is hand. The abstract is thanks. The pictograph, yod, is a picture of a hand. Okay. And they're not going to go there. And the dowel is a picture of a door that allows movement in and out of the tent. Combine these mean the hand moves. The hand is a part of the body that enables man to perform many works. Okay, so that's where we get it's in battle from the hand of the sword. It can be used for good or evil. And here is the sword from the power of the sword. Oh. It's H2719 in the Strong's and in Benner's Hebrew Lexicon it's 2199N Harab a sword a weapon used to lay waste to a city. Uh, he's gunning for the new Yerushalayim. And Yahuwah was taking out the old Yerushalayim. Waste, a dry or desolate place. So it has two different definitions in there. At the three letter adopted root, we have it from right to left, a chet 
a resh and a bait. The action waste, concrete sword. Benner's got it coming from the het resh, heat. We go down, we look at the het resh. The heat from the sun, the heat of anger, also tomorrow or a later time as a delay. Het resh is the harmony of the parent. The action is burn. The head is a picture of a wall representing the outside. The resh is a picture of a man. Combine these mean outside man. A man outside in the desert sun becomes pale and hot. So this sword, just like the drought that's just happened. I know the word drought is in here. It's only used one time. Um, there's some other words for drought that are more applicable. But a but we do have that it's a dry and a desolate place. I think many of us have seen that this year, maybe for ourselves, maybe in the news. Um, we don't want to be in a dry and desolate land. So, he's going to save us from the distress of the battle from the hand of the sword that would lay waste to those <clears throat> whose words don't match their actions. True. Very true. Is that what he said about Yo? That's not what he said about Yo. Now as we go on later on in the book, We find out that Job had to get rid of that little, last little bit of pride in him. And he had to realize that all these things, Yah allows all these things to happen for the good of those who love him. So, who is in pursuit of us? Bottom line is essay 10. But what did this look like in the past? So let's go to Exodus 15, verses 1 to 13. I don't know if you guys can hear that little baby chick, but oh! Then Moshe <clears throat> and the children of Israel sang the song to Yahuwah and spoke, saying, I sing to Yahuwah, for he is highly exalted. The horse and its rider he has thrown into the sea, where they belong, with the rest of the raging sea. that the whore rides among. Yah is my strength and my song. He is the weapon that I know. He has become my deliverance. He is my El and I praise him. <coughs> Aloha of my father and I exalt him. Yahuwah is a man of battle. Yahuwah is his name. So why we have to fight between flesh and spirit, who is in control of the ultimate battle? Yahuwah. And Yahuwah is his name. And we are not to curse it. If we are going to come out of Egypt with Egypt in pursuit of us, and now, now we're coming out of Babylon. It's all a picture all the way through. They were coming out to go to the mount here. We should be coming out to go to the first resurrection so that the second death has no power over us when we're at the mount. Yahuwah is a man of battle. And now Satan says, watch, look at it. I can get Job to do it. 
He has cast Pharaoh's chariots and his army into the sea. And his chosen officers are drowned in the sea of reeds. The depths covered them. They went down to the bottom like a stone. Hmm. Your right hand, O Yahuwah, has become great in power. Your right hand, O Yahuwah, has crushed the enemy. He will save us from the enemy. Hmm. And in the greatness of your excellence, you pulled down those who rose up against you. You sent forth your wrath. It consumed them like stubble. And with the wind, your nostrils, the waters were heaped up. The flood stood like a wall, and the depths became stiff in the heart of the sea. The enemy said, I pursue. Yes, he does. He says that. I overtake. Yes, he does. He says that. I divide the spoil. My being is satisfied on them. Wouldn't Esaitan have been satisfied if a yod would have cursed the name of Eloah to his face? The enemy is in pursuit. Not of the ones that are already led astray. Not of really even of the ones that have taken the mark because they're going to die through the whole physical scenario anyway. He's in pursuit of those whose words would match their actions. And he's after you with the physical sword and, and the twisted word of the sword of the word. I draw out my sword. My hand destroys them. Huh, I wonder what that destroys looks like. Let's go look. I don't know. I don't have anything written down here. Verse 9. So it's 15. Huh. Yahash. Oh, that's a beautiful picture. Inherit. The inheritor becomes the head of the family. This is where we get fresh, or rosh, or head, or beginning, or top, or first. The action is inherit, the concrete is head. The rush is a picture of a head. The head of the tribe, chief, family, father is passed from generation to generation. The head grants permission for the betrothal of his daughters and determines... The inheritor of the tribe or the family. The head of a person, place, thing, or time. So now we know who he's out to destroy. Those that would inherit the kingdom. Yahuwah as their husband. And that's where they were headed when they crossed the Sea of Reeds. Yahuwah saved him, them then. Of course, when they goofed it up, we have the whole scenario with the Aaronic priesthood, and now we're, you know, Yahushua's Melchizedek, and we're, we're back to that point. You did blow with your wind, the sea covered them, and they sank like lead into the mighty waters. Who is like you, O Yahuwah, among the mighty ones? Who is like you, great in set apartness, awesome in praises? Working wonders, working great judgment, great acts of judgment. I mean, where do we want to be? Drown in the sea with the whore and the beast or lake of fire? Because those that are riding in the, the sea that the, that the whore rides among, that the beast is going to come out of, <laughs> will be thrown in the lake of fire. You who stretched out your right hand, the earth swallowed them. In your loving commitment, 
you led the people whom you have redeemed in your strength. You guided them to your set apart dwelling. Our actions need to match our words. The enemy is in pursuit, but Yahuwah is a man of battle. And while we have to fight the flesh and the spirit here, we really, we don't fight against flesh and blood in others. We fight against principles, well actually, <laughs> ourselves too. We fight against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, the prince of the power of the air. And certain things have been ingrained in us from even our first days, or even in the womb, even ahead of time, Yahuwah knew. And we're either going to work those things out and beseech Him to help us work those things out and take a look at ourselves that He might save us from these six distresses and in seven no evil shall befall you so what Eliphaz is true you will do that but is that what's going on with the yoke because Satan is trying to get Yob to curse the name of Yahuwah and he's using every tactic he can I talked about the people who lost everything and everyone in a fire everyone and everything in a tornado and I don't know anything about that I have no experience um, I, 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 I can't even begin to truly relate to that But you hear and you see some that curse the name of Yahuwah and quit believing. It's an unfair and all these other things. And some that it draws them closer. That's what's going on here. Am I saying any of those people were being, have consequences or not? I, I can't answer that. I, I don't know all those people. That's what that reminds me of. So 1 Samuel 17, 43 to 52. And the Philistine, Mogoliath himself, said to Daoud, Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? Uh, Yes, yes you are. Uh, yes, those sticks represent something. Goliath would have had no clue. And the Philistine cursed Daoud by his mighty ones. <coughs> whoop de doo Alright, let me get off my facetious. And the Philistine said to Daoud, Come to me, and I give your flesh to the birds of the heavens and the beasts of the field. I don't think so. Just like in the end, if you come to Yahuwah, you're not going to be one whose flesh is given to the birds of the heavens and the beasts of the field. But Daoud said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword and a spear and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of Yahuwah Zavot, which means he is the head, the leader of the army. Yahuwah is a man of battle, and he is the head of the army. And it doesn't matter if they have a physical sword, a spear, or a javelin. We come in the name of Yahuwah, Eloah, Yahuwah, Zavot, the Eloah of the armies of Yishrael. El, whom you have reproached. Oh, and if we're not going, 
that way, we shouldn't even go. This is the day Yahuwah shall deliver you into my hand. And I shall strike you and take your head from you and give the carcasses to of the and give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines today to the birds of heaven. We see something real similar in Revelation. And to the wild beasts of the earth. So that all the earth know that Eloah is for Yishrael. If you're gonna rule with El. If you're going to turn your head to L, if you're going to be under the head of L, if you're going to inherit Yahuwah L as your husband and be in that land of inheritance, you will come in the name of Yahuwah Zavot. Because no sword they got, no javelin, no spear matters and all these and 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 he did use his words Goliath did he did use his words to say who who are you you little squirt okay so so still so sometimes their words do match their their foul words do match their foul actions okay don't worry about it Sometimes they, they're really nice. And then they get you on the back, try to get you on the backside. Don't worry about it. We need to go in the name of Yahuwah. Mm. And all the assembly, and all this assembly know that Yahuwah does not save with the sword and a spear. For the battle belongs to Yahuwah. So bottom line is while these things may happen in the physical it's a spiritual battle from the get-go. Hey, you're you're not going into the kingdom with the physical sword. What does one need to be used here? Maybe so. We see lots of battles happen in the old in in the Tanakh. But he saves you by giving you a heart of flesh and not a heart of stone. from the inside, not from the outside. He changes who you are. But we have to do the work. For the battle belongs to Yahuwah, and he shall give you into our And it came to be, when the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet Daoud, Daoud hurried and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. Ain't nothing to be scared of. If Yahuwah says, get up in there, well, get up in there. Hmm. I needed to hear that. I don't know if any of you did, but I needed to hear that. And Dawood put his hand in his bag and took out a stone and slung it and struck the Philistine right in the middle of his forehead. The name of Yahuwah never going to be in the middle of his forehead. And of course when we look where stone comes from, well that would be a whole other study, but you can't. Look that up. So that the stone sank into his forehead. That's an interesting mark, isn't it? And he fell upon his face to the ground. Hmm, that's interesting. I never thought about that. That might make an interesting study, too. Reminds me of Dagon. Thus, Daoud was stronger than the Philistine with a sling and a stone. Right? Because Yahuwah was the man of battle. Go in the name of Yahuwah. And struck the Philistine and killed him, and there was no sword in the hand of Daoud. Then Daoud ran and stood over the Philistine and took his sword 
<clears throat> and drew it out of its sheath. <coughs> Excuse me, out of its sheath. And killed him and cut off his head with it. Because he was under the head of Yahuwah. And when the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they fled. Right? And some, and the men of Israel and Jehuda arose and shouted and pursued the Philistines as far as the entrance of the valley and to the gates of Ekron. <clears throat> Bring it on. And the wounded of the Philistines fell along the way to Sha'aryaim, even as far as Gath and Ekron. Go in the name of Yahuwah. He will save you in battle from the power of their sword. Or what they think is a powerful sword. What a, what a beautiful picture of David being a king, of David being our Malky, a Malky picture. What a beautiful picture. Bring on the giants. How about that? How about bring on the giants? Because they're coming, and they're here, and they're gunning for you. So come on, let's go with the name of you. Bring them on. Leviticus 26, 14 to 16. But there's some work to be done. Okay? There's some work to be done. And I'm not saying Job had not repented for a thing. We have no nothing about Job in that department that I've seen so far. Or that I saw the first couple times I read the book. Um, well, I've read it more than a couple. But the last couple times I've read it, there was nothing that I saw there. Um... But we have work to do, okay? Whether it's a need for change of things that were ingrained in us, things that we need to repent for, realizing that um, the things that we were ingrained with now need to be worked on and we need to change our attitude about them, whether things are happening and we don't understand why, and it's you who are allowing the enemy to try to get us to curse his name and we're not going to no matter what happens because again that's coming so i'm gonna talk a little bit about this here because i think it's really important for all of us each and every one of us to be in the correct heart condition before yahuwah as correct We have to beseech him for it, and we have to do the work no matter how bad it hurts. Um, this is why I love my Stephanie. Because she'll just tell me like it is. But she doesn't have to beat me up with it. Right, Stephanie? Right. Correct, Stephanie. All right, Leviticus 26. <clears throat> I guess we're going to read quite a bit here. Okay. So this is something that, you know... While um, Eliphaz was telling the truth about discipline, at least as far as I could tell he was, you know, um, I didn't see anything out of line in Blessed is the man whom Aloha disapproves, so do not despise the day of discipline of the Almighty, for he bruises, but he binds up, he smites, but his hand heals. Yeah, I, that's very true. Was that what was going on with Job? But I, don't, I didn't see that. Um, he's trying to get him to curse the name of Aloha because that's part of his plan. You're being disciplined, Job. So, uh, you know, in, enjoy it. Um, and it was, the whole thing was about to get him to curse Aloha because it sounds to me like Job was at a point where he was right on the cusp of, I'm going to say, walking in the completeness of love which is in Peter, which is the eighth step, getting into the kingdom and all this business. So since he did say that, and it's, it's true, Leviticus 26, 14 to 46. Because anybody that says they don't have any sin is a liar and the truth isn't in them. 
Did you ever sin again? Well. I wasn't there, I don't know. But I know that's what that scripture says. So, I have to go by what the scripture says. Did he recognize it immediately and was able to repent? I think that's the gift. After repentance, that's the gift. Oh, I ain't going to do that again. Oh, I just did something that right away you know. Lots of time, most of the time, it should stop us. Okay, 14. Yeah, 14. But if you do not obey me and do not do all these commands... And if you reject my laws, or if your being loathes my right rulings, so that you do not do all my commands, but break my covenant, I shall also do this to you. And I shall appoint sudden alarm over you, wasting disease and inflammation, destroying the eyes and consuming the life. And you shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. And I shall set my face against you, and you shall be smitten before your enemies. And those who hate you shall rule over you, and you shall flee when no one pursues. After all of this, if you do not obey me, then I shall punish you seven times more for your sins. I thought that was interesting. There were seven times more. And he's going to save us from six distresses and seven evils. And so, am I saying that, um, no, well, what I'm saying is that, back at 13, we didn't read 13, huh, I am Yahoo, let's just go back and read 13. Right, maybe we should have read the whole thing. 11. And I shall set my dwelling place in your midst, and my being shall not reject you. Well, that's what's coming. For those who repent, and then they're at the place where what's left is for the enemy to try to get you to curse the name of Eloah. And it's, I keep saying it's coming. We're going to lose everything. And the only thing we're going to have to rely on is Yahuwah. And none of it's ours anyway. For him to set his dwelling place in our midst. That we shall not be rejected by him. That he shall walk in our midst and be our Eloah. And we shall be his people. I am Yahuwah Eloah who brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim. We just read about that. We were pursued. We were pursued. We still are being pursued. The enemy's in pursuit. From being their slaves. Are we sick of that yet? He brought us out to bring us into something. That's the end of Deuteronomy 6. And make you walk upright. That is, raise you up. It is the word for kum, which is resurrection. Alright, where do we leave off at? 19. And I shall break the pride of your power, and shall make your heavens like iron, and your earth like bronze. Which is where we get serpent, nosh. And your, and your strength shall be spent in vain, and your land yet yield its crops, nor the trees of the land yield their fruit. If you walk contrary to me, if that's in our lives, we need to stop it. We need to beseech him to open our eyes to where we are walking contrary to him if we are. We need to quit refusing to obey. But if we don't, I shall bring on you seven times more plagues according to your sins. And send wild beasts among you, which shall bereave you of your children. And I shall cut off your livestock and make you few in number, and your highways shall be deserted. 
So Yo must have been questioning his mind just by what I just read. I didn't see that before. Um, livestock cut off. Um, servants taken. So I could see where the adversary would be using this <clears throat> to get a Yob to curse Aloha. And if you are not instructed by me, by these, but walk contrary to me, then I shall also walk contrary to you, and I myself shall strike you seven times for your sins. So do we want him to save us from the six distresses and the seven evils? Or do we want him to strike us seven times and seven times again? And I shall bring against you a sword, executing the vengeance of my covenant. That's not the sword of the enemy got in his hand. That right there is do or die. And you shall gather together in your cities, and I shall send pestilence among you. You shall be given into the hand of the enemy. When I have cut off your supply of bread, ten women shall break your bed in one oven, and they shall bring back to you your bread by weight, and you shall eat and not be satisfied. And if in spite of this you do not obey, but walk contrary to me, then I shall walk contrary to you in wrath, and I myself shall punish you seven times for your sins. This is, and you shall eat the flesh of your sons and eat the flesh of your daughters. And I shall, we saw that in, I think it was Yermiahu. And I shall destroy your high places and cut down your sun pillars and put your carcasses on the carcasses of your idols and my being shall loathe you. And I shall turn your cities into ruins and lay your set apart places waste hmm. and not smell your sweet fragrances. Hmm. Leviticus 26 30. shall lay your cities waste 31 same place we get the sword same root line this one waste a dry or desolate place so we're either going to be protected from this by having repented which I'm thinking Job's already repented. Um, these things are happening to get him to curse Aloha. I think the enemy's trying to make him think things that um, maybe he's already worked out with Yahuwah. That's, that's a possibility. But these things are also happening on another note to get Job to work out that last little bit of Yahuwah's in control. I am not in control. Um, are we to that point, each and every one of us? Um, I, I can't answer for you. I have no idea. Um, but these first things are we need to stop walking contrary to Him. We need to fully obey Him in everything. In everything. Or we're going to find ourselves in this position. And it's going to be a lot easier. Yeah, I, th I think it's going to be a lot easier for the enemy to accomplish his goal. Then if we're at the eighth step of love, as recorded in Peter, having lost all pride, 
having gone through brotherly affection and now we're at the place of love where that's the last thing and the greatest of these is love it's the eighth step into the holy place in Yehezkel but we must go through all these the other steps first and all the other steps are worked out by us walking according to him and not contrary to him obeying him and not disobeying him and in disobedience if there is we need to repent and then we need to change it's not just I'm sorry now our actions the sword that we're wielding need to match our words the sword of our mouth Oh, my back starting to hurt. <clears throat> and I shall lay waste, I shall lay the land waste, and your enemies who dwell in it shall be astonished at it. And I shall scatter you among the nations, and draw out a sword after you. And your land shall be deserted, and your cities ruins. That's not the sword we want coming after us. In this sense. Do we want it to change who we are and cut off the bad flesh from the spirit? Of course, but it's not this way. And the land enjoy its Sabbaths as long as it lies waste and you are in your enemy's land. Then the land would rest and enjoy its Sabbaths. As long as it lies waste and in rest, it rests. For the time it did not rest on your Sabbaths when you dwelt in it. And as for those of you who are left, I shall send faintness into their hearts, in the land of their enemies, and the sound of a shaken leaf shall cause them to flee. Make it a lot easier for the enemy. It'll make it a lot harder if we don't walk contrary and we just obey. And they shall flee as though retreating from a sword. <laughs> huh. And they shall fall when no one pursues. And they shall stumble over one another as from before a sword. Are we scared? Well, if we're walking contrary and disobedient, we ought to be. And you shall be unable to stand before your enemies. I myself would like to be like Daoud. Bring it on. And you shall perish among the nations, and the land of your enemies shall eat you up. And those of you who are left, rot away in their crookedness, in your enemies' lands, and also in their father's crookedness, crookednesses rot away with them. And now, here's where we are. But if they confess their crookednesses and the crookedness of their fathers, which that's what Job, I think we find later, asks him. Just tell me what it is, Yahuwah. Just, just judge me. Just do it. Let me get it over with here. If there's something I need to do, let me do it. I think that's the basic idea we're going to see. But if they confess their crookedness and the crookedness of their fathers with their trespass in which they trespass against me and that they have also walked contrary to me. Hmm. That's an interesting word. Um, verse 40. Where does this come from? Gather the men. Who are we going to be gathered to? Contrary to him or to him? And that I have also walked contrary to them 
and have brought them into the land of their enemies. If their uncircumcised heart is then humbled, becomes soft, and they accept the punishment of their crookedness, then I shall remember my covenant with Yaakov, and also my covenant with Yitzhak, and also my covenant with Abraham, and remember the land. This is your land. He told Abraham, as far as you could see. For the land was abandoned by them and enjoying its Sabbaths while lying waste without them. And they were paying for their crookedness <clears throat> because they rejected my right rulings and because they're being loathed to my laws. And yet, for all this, when they are in the land of their enemies, I shall not reject them. Why? Because we confessed. And if we don't know if there's something to what Job did, judge me, Yahuwah, show me, Yahuwah. But there can't be any pride in there about it. Because you're not in control, I'm not in control. Nobody else is in control. You're in control of what you do, but you're not in control of the overall picture. But just like the tongue, it's like a little rudder that turns the whole ship. Your actions much, mass, much match your words. And yet for all this, when they are in the land of their enemies, I shall not reject them, nor shall I loathe them as to destroy them and break my covenant with them. For I am Yahuwah, their Eloah. So, verse 44. <coughs> I shall not utterly destroy them. I shall not destroy them. 1242 HV. To bring something to its completion. Whether Tob completion or Ra'ah completion. Because we were Tob here or we were Ra'ah here. Because we were Tob in our words which match our actions. So who's not going to be utterly destroyed that are guaranteed the first resurrection? Who will that be? For sure, the bride. Then I shall remember for their sake the covenant, the marriage covenant. We're in the land. We've got the land covenant above, Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. Then I shall remember for their sake the covenant of the ancestors whom I brought out of the land of Mitzrayim before the eyes of the nations to be their Eloah, I am Yahuwah, because he brought them out because Yahuwah is a man of battle. And he, even though the enemy was in pursuit with the sword, he brought them out to bring them into a marriage that they rejected. So what about us? So what about us? Oh yes, Yahuwah will do all that you say. Well, let us go make a golden calf. What? Words didn't match the actions. And that's what the enemy's trying to put into your head. He's trying to kill you physically. But first he wants to kill you spiritually. Because you need to be not coming in, not fighting in the name of Yahuwah. Walking contrary, being disobedient. Then, then he can just get rid of you physically because now you're in a condition where you're never going to change it. And this is what Eliphaz is trying to put on Eob. I'm not saying these things don't need to be done. How you like that, Sylvia? We need to be so familiar with the truth and be able to take a look at ourselves and our past and what's been ingrained in us since the womb that we can say like Daoud did. Bring it on, you dirty dog. I know David didn't say dirty dog. Philistine called himself that. 
These are the laws and the right rulings and the Torah which Yahuwah made between himself and the children of Israel on Mount Sinai by the hand of Moshe. So that Torah written on those that came by the hand of Moshe. It came by the hand. Isn't that beautiful? All right. I think I want to, Jeremiah 18. Oh, we're going to read all Jeremiah 18. Yeah, let's see how long it is. We all just need to be at this point where Eob was. And that's really what I'm trying to pull out here. We all really need to be at this point where Eob was. And then we need to go through what Eob went through and get rid of any thought or notion that we have control, overall control, of anything. Do we have control of our choices? Okay, you, you get to choose. Not saying that. I'm saying the whole picture of how the wheel of life works, which your tongue can start on fire. Jeremiah 18. And the word which came to Yeremiahu from Yahuwah, saying, Arise, go down to the potter's house, and there I let you hear my words. <laughs> we are not the potter. So I went down to the potter's house and saw him doing a piece of work on the wheel. <laughs> And the vessel that he made of clay, you, me, all of them, some for honor, some for dishonor, who are you to say what the potter should be doing? Who am I to say? Who are any of us to say? Was ruined in the hand of the potter. He bruises, but he binds up, right? So he remade it into another vessel as it seemed good to the potter to do. Sounds told that the potter can do it to me. Then the word of Yahuwah came to me, saying, O house of Israel, am I not able to do with you as this potter declares Yahuwah? Look, as the clay is in the hand of the potter, so you are in my hand. O house of Israel. The moment I speak concerning a nation and concerning a reign to pluck it up, to pull it down, and to destroy it. And that nation shall turn from its evil because I have spoken against it. Then I shall relent. He's, who is not repenting here. It's a whole other concept. Of the evil that I thought to do to it. Let's take a look at it. Jeremiah 18. Clear something up here. Because Yahuwah is not a man that he should repent. That's in Numbers. I want to say it's in 22. This is verse 8. This is Nacham 2392 V to give comfort in a time of difficulty or sorrow to have sorrow for an action. He was sorry that he ever had to do this. But yes, they repented. And now he's going to give them comfort in a time of difficulty or sorrow. It's not repentance like we need to repent. Oh, happy English, right? This actually comes from Noah. Noah. Last time it was water. This time it'll be fire. Let's go back to nine. 
And the moment I speak concerning a nation and concerning a reign to build and to plan it, and it shall do evil in my eyes. Oh, maybe I didn't read that part. In not obeying my voice, then I shall repent concerning the good which I spoke of doing. So again, now there is going to be no comfort in this time of difficulty or sorrow. And he's going to be sorry. It, it, it's, it would grieve him to have him do what he had to do in the days of Noah to a people who are supposed to be his people. And now speak to the men of Yehuda and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, Thus says Yahuwah, See, I am forming evil and devising a plan against you. This would not be a picture of the new Yerushalayim that is coming down out of the Shemaim. This is a picture of the Rushalayim as it is now, according to Galatians 4. If we want dysfunction, Ra'a, evil, well, we're going to get it. Sometimes dysfunction is going to look like it's happening, even though it's not even though for the whole picture it's for the tobe of those who love them we need to be able to discern <clears throat> and devising making a plan a pattern against you it's all by design whether it be designed by the enemy or designed by Yahuwah and his design of course is going to win out return now everyone from his evil way and make your ways and your deeds tobe. But they shall say, It is no use, for we walk according to our own plans. <laughs> oh, and we do each one the stubbornness of his dysfunctional heart. Therefore, thus says Yahuwah, Ask now among the nations, who has heard the like of this? The maiden of Israel has done what is most horrible. Reminds me of the mount. It's another seed. Does the snow of Lebanon cease from the rock of the field? Or the cool flowing waters from afar dry up? But my people have forgotten me. I want, well, let's go see what forgotten goes to. Let's just see what forgotten looks like. But my people hath forgotten me. To forget. We better get on the look to find something that is forgotten or hidden. Forgot all about him. And have burned incense to what is false. And they have stumbled from their ways, from the ancient paths, to walk in bypaths and not on the highway that is above the surrounding area. How are we seeing things? To make their land become a ruin, a hissing forever. Everyone who passes by it is appalled and shakes his head. I shall scatter them as with an east wind before the enemy. I shall show them the back and not the face in the day of their calamity. Then they said, Come and let us devise plans against Yermiyahu. A plan, a pattern, a design against those who were deceived that were possible for the tarot shall not perish from the priest nor counsel from the wise nor the word from the prophet P 
peace and safety. We got it all covered. Come, let us strike him with the tongue. Oh, sword of the mouth, lashing of the tongue. And let us not listen to any of his words. Attend to me, O Yahuwah, and listen to the voice of my adversaries. He hears it. Should good be repaid with evil? Should Tob be repaid with Ra'ah? Well, that would be a mess, Satan. For they have dug a pit for my life. Remember that I stood before you to speak good for them and to turn away your wrath from them. So give their children over to scarcity of food. We talked about that last time. And hand them over to the power of the sword. You will either be saved from it or turned over to the power of it by the end of the enemy. Let their wives become widows and bereaved children. Let their men be killed to death. Their young men be stricken by the sword in battle. Yeremiah who sees I think quite a bit like Yahuwah sees saying this is what's going to happen. Let a cry be heard from their houses when you bring a raiding party suddenly upon them. For they have dug a pit to take me and laid snares for my feet. Even the elect. If it were possible. And it's going to happen. Are we going to curse the name of Yahuwah? Because I don't think Yahu was being disciplined for anything here. I could be wrong. And he's saying some of the same things that Yob was saying. In a sense. Well, maybe not in this chapter, but... You know, judge me. What have I done? Maybe it's not so much Yahu. But you, O Yahuwah, you know all their counsel against me to slay me. Do not pardon their crookedness, nor blot out their sin from your presence, and let them be overthrown before you. Deal with them in the time of your displeasure. Yet in Yob, it, and in other places, he tells us if we accept the discipline, we will be saved from the power of the sword. But yet here, I, I don't see Yahu again being disciplined or anything. Yet he is going through all these things. Because the potter can do whatever he wants on his wheel. And it's all for the good of those who love him. No matter what it looks like, don't let the enemy fool you. Don't let him trick you into being disobedient walking contrary or when you get to the place and you've moved you've moved out of a lot of these things in your walk to get you to curse the name of Aloha no matter what happens because it's coming it's coming So, does repenting for whatever you're being shown guarantee entrance into the first resurrection? Well, I would say it certainly gives one a better chance. Maybe there's things we don't see. Maybe we're think he's still the potter and we're still the clay. Whatever it is, it's being worked out for the good of those who love him. If there is discipline going on, accept it. Repent. Quit walking contrary. If it's trying to get you to curse the name of Yahuwah, well, obviously don't do it. But remember, in all these things, as we're going to see at the end of Yob, he's the potter and we're the clay. And anyone that tells you that they are guaranteed the first resurrection, I want to tell you to run because I promise you they are not the potter. 
Eliphaz, Bilbad, and Zophar are not the potter. In fact, they're running on a vision of Eliphaz's that came from Satan, as we saw. This does not mean we never listen to anybody else. But we must be so familiar with the truth of what the scriptures say that when the counterfeit looms on the horizon, we recognize him immediately. It'd be a Berean. Prove out all things. Hebrews 11. Twenty nine to forty. Of course, Hebrews eleven, as we learned in Churchianity, is the hall of faith. Okay. And we're going to start with twenty nine. And this is I was talking about Moshe up to this little section here and during this section. By belief. They passed through the Red Sea as by dry land. And when the Mitzrites tried it, they were drowned. So let the enemy pursue you with the sword. Go ahead. That's a type of baptism right there, a type of immersion. You think he ain't gunning for you? <laughs> By belief, the walls of Jericho fell, having been surrounded for seven days. By belief, Rahab the whore did not perish with those who did not believe, having received the spies with peace. Sounds like she had a change of heart to me. I've seen it coming. See it coming? Are the walls that are guarding your heart? How do I want to say that? We're going to be stones in the wall of the new Yerushalayim. So whatever's going to make us that stone is what we, we need to be. But this, the wall, the stones around the wall of Jericho, around them, around what was in their heart. That's a whole nother picture. It's like the Yerushalayim that is now. You're going to keep, are we going to keep guarding that garbage that's in our heart? And what more shall I say? For the time would fail me to relate of Gideon and Barak uh, and Shimshon and Yiptah, also of Dawood and Shemuel and the prophets, who through belief their actions matched their words and their words matched their actions, overcame reigns, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions. Shut them up. Quenched the power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword. We just read about Daoud. Out of weakness were made strong. Mm. Became mighty in battle because they were of the armies of Yahuwah. But put, put foreign armies to flight. So much for that sword. Forty. Women received back their dead by resurrection, and others were tortured, not accepting release, to obtain a better resurrection. It is coming, no matter what happens. Do not curse the name of Eloah. Do not take the mark of the beast. And others had trial of mockings and floggings and more, of chains and imprisonment. Lost everything. Got chained up. Got imprisoned. Got flogged got mocked. Job got boils, lost his family, lost his livestock. 
<clears throat> they were stoned, they were tried, they were sawn in two, they were slain with a sword. They went about in sheepskin and goatskins, being in need, afflicted, mistreated, of whom the world was not worthy. Don't forget that. Wandering in deserts and mountains and caves and in holes of the earth. Oh, Yob lost it all. I don't even see him wandering in no holes in the earth or being sawn into. I don't know what happened to him after all this, but... Um, these things are coming. I know I've been saying this for since 2018. We're so close now. If you can't see it, um, beseech Yahuwah. And having obtained witness through the belief, all these did not receive the promise. We're slated to have the possibility of receiving it in our lifetime. Possibly. It's looking that way. Aloha having provided what is better for us, that they should not be made perfect apart from us. Our actions need to match our words. We need not to be walking contrary. We need not to be walking in disobedience. We need to let him be the potter and us be the clay. And this wheel of life. <laughs> oh, what a picture. Praise Yahuwah. If you're not sure if there's something, we'll beseech him. Beseech him. Do not take the mark of the beast. Do not curse the name of Eloah. Whatever it is the adversary is trying to get you to do, that you know is against the word of Yahuwah. Oh, I must have got comfortable there, huh? Just don't do it. <laughs> hmm. Deuteronomy 32, 39 to 43. Hey, a short one. See now that I, I am he, and there is no Aloha beside me. I'm not going to get on that soapbox. I put to death, and I make alive. Oh, look, the potter. I have wounded, and I heal. Oh, look, the potter. Oh, look, what was said back in you. He bruises, and he binds up, etc., etc., and from my hand, no one delivers. For I lift my hand to the heavens, and shall say, As I live forever, if I have sharpened my flashing sword, Baruch, and my hand takes hold on judgment, I shall return vengeance to my enemies, and repay those who hate me. I make my arrows drunk with blood. <laughs> yes. Stupid whore drunk with the blood of the set apart ones. And my sword devours flesh. Whether it's to kill our flesh now, or it's going to kill the flesh of the enemy at some point. With the blood of the slain and the captives from the long haired enemy chiefs. O nations, acclaim his people. For he avenges the blood of his servants and returns vengeance on his adversaries and shall pardon his land and his people. The sword is his. If the enemy chooses to twist it up, that's what the enemy does. He takes you out physically with the sword or some other implement, I guess it could be, with the sword. very well could happen. Don't let him take you out spiritually by using the sword of Yahuwah in a twisted up manner. 
Beseech Yahuwah for discernment. So, our words must match our actions. In order to be saved from the scarcity of food. Again, I'm not saying we won't die from it physically. But we're not going to be short of spiritual food even if we die from lack of physical food. Our words must match our actions. Even if the sword of the enemy does end up taking us out for whatever reason. But, it, but it's not going to take us out spiritually. Because it's not the truth, the full truth. There might be some truth in it. Of the word of Yahuwah. Our words must match our actions. And that last little bit of pride in us. Has the thinking we are the potter in any way, shape, or form. Must come out. Or we can't walk in the purity of love. And I'm going to go so far as to say we're not first resurrection material. Job 5, 15 going to read a couple short verses in Yob 5, because that's where we've been. Oh, back. Hmm. Yob. Oh, this little chickadee. I don't know how it can be hungry again. Like a child, right? Yo, 5.15. We talked about this already. But he saves the needy from the sword of their mouth, from the clutches of the strong. So the sword of the mouth is speech. The enemy's got speech. We got speech. The enemy's words probably don't match his actions. But if they do match his actions, neither of them are any good. Verse 20. Oh, which is what we're looking at now. Uh, he's going to redeem us from death and scarcity of food. That may be physical, may not, but it definitely will be eternal. And in battle from the power of the sword. Because no weapon formed against us is going to prosper and take away eternal life. Don't lose your crown. And 21. When the tongue scourges, you are shielded. So, the sword of the mouth also involves the tongue. They were lashing Yermiahu with the tongue. The enemy might be speaking sweet and kind to you. They might be lashing you. They might be doing one thing and doing something else behind your back. Okay? We need to be concerned with our words matching our actions and be aware of what the adversary us because we're so familiar with the truth as it is with Yahuwah his words always match his actions and so must ours or we're all, by default thinking for the potter we've got some other plan pattern or design in our heart in our mind that we're speaking different than we're acting let us not only love in word and in truth, but also in deed and in action. I know that verse reads a little bit different, okay? But that's how it should read. I think we're missing something in there. Okay, so or we will not be first resurrection material. Because at that point, we can't be walking in love. The sword of Yah's mouth and the lake of fire and revelation, for those whose works are not of him, his hands and his feet, slash the book of life, the book of life is based on works after immersion or the initial salvation okay you can't be saying one thing and doing another they both go hand in hand Yahuwah's word what he spoke everything from the elder to the tall in his proper order brings forth truth in action and so should ours Psalm 149 
praise Yah. Don't curse his name, praise his name. Sing to Yahuwah a new song. Won't you 144,000 of the remnant, which is where that word comes from? His praise in an assembly of lovingly committed ones. A unified assembly. Psalm 133, dwelling in unity on the way to the walk to the water. Let Israel rejoice in their maker. Let the children of Zion, first resurrection, exalt in their sovereign. Oh, that's a whole other study I'm learning about. Let them praise their name, his name, in a dance. Not curse his name. Let them sing. Can you? Okay, now, let, now let's get a picture on with that. What kind of dancing looks like it would be cursing Yahuwah? I don't think I even need to go any further. Let them sing praises to him with the tambourine and the lyre. For Yahuwah takes pleasure in his people that are not walking contrary to him, that are obedient, that have worked out that last little bit of pride, that realize he's the potter and that they're the clay. He embellishes the meek ones with deliverance because they inherit the earth. Let the lovingly committed ones exalt in esteem. Let them sing aloud in their beds. Let the exaltation of El be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. We need to take up the sword of Yahuwah and wield it properly by what's been spoken by Yahuwah and by what we speak matching our actions. To execute vengeance on the nations because their actions aren't the actions of Yahuwah whether their words say it or not. Punishment on the people. To bind their sovereigns with chains and their nobles with iron bands. To execute on them written right ruling. A splendor it is for all his lovingly committed ones Praise Yahuwah. Makes one wonder, as someone said to me, it's been a few weeks ago now. There's your Second Amendment right there. Possibly. Saying that it is. Possibly. Genesis 3, 22-24. Very familiar to all of us. I always end up back here in this chapter. Of course, this is after the fall of Adam and Hawa. And Jehovah Aloha said, See, the man has become like Ehad, like I am. Now, go we'll look that up and see if that doesn't go to I. Let's go look it up. I'm not going to go very far on this soapbox, but I'm just going to take a peek here. I'm putting something together on this. It's just not ready yet. Where's that us? Where is this us? Ahad. One. Right, we got a cough here. And then we got this word here, part of, from out of many senses. I don't know, all kind. This this word's just, it's it's almost more than you could bear. Like kind after like kind, okay? Well, who's, who's... It's down here. It could be from... It could be uh, kind. Um, from my remembrance in here, none of these 
at the end of here, on here, make it us. This one might here. Noon, this one right here might make it an us. Maybe it doesn't make it an us. I can't remember. I started a study on it. I haven't finished yet. But the word's not here. It's a suffix. And it changes from place to place. Okay, so now, just like I know good and evil, I'm aware of all the aspects because I am the one who knows it all. This is Ra'a and this is Tob. Now they know this is Ra'a and this is Tob. Just like I do. One of, here we have the word, okay, I get it's in English, us. Let's see what it says. Oh, well, not in the ancient Hebrew lexicon we wrote. I. I. Translated as I and me. I. I'm not never saying it's not translated as an us. Obviously it is. It's I. If we're going to have a word there, it's going to be I. I don't care what suffix they added to it. Okay. Anyway, we're going to come off that soapbox now. That's for a whole other study. And let's go back to what we were reading. I even shut my scripture book. I get pretty excited about that one. Alright. And Yahuwah Aloha said, See, the man has become unified in knowing Tov from Ra'ah because I am the potter. Even though he's the clay, now he's got some idea of what it is. Because he's now he's got that knowledge like I have. I didn't put that in him at first. To know Tov and Ra'ah. And now, lest he put his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Not happening in this state. Not happening thinking we're the potter. So Yahuwah Aloah sent him out of the garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken. And he drove the man out. And he placed cherubim at the east of the garden of Eden and a flaming sword. The sword is actually pouring out its contents. You want it to flame, that's fine. It can be on fire too. Everything from the L to the Ta is pouring out of this sword. And if you're not in total order with everything from the L to the Ta, covered in Messiah at this point, it's turning every which way. Oh no, turning every which way is pouring out its contents. Guarding the way to the tree of life. Not going back there. Thinking we're the potter and not the clay. Let's go look that up now that I said that. Flaming. It is flaming. Wrong word I said. Flaming. Burning. Unknown connection to the root. All the authority, I, I, and it could very well be connected. Huh. All the authority contained in his word is him. Because he is the authority. Because he's the only one. Because there is no other Aloha. I, I am he. The covering that covers and hides the face of a woman. Okay. I don't know about that part of it. Yeah. Hmm. That might be an interesting study. The sword, which we've seen, what's it doing? It's pouring out its contents. It's pouring out its contents. Everything from the L to the Ta to guard. Anything that is not in the order of the L to the Ta from coming in and taking from the tree of life to be in this condition forever. Worry they're going to be saved. Receive his discipline if that's where we're at. Which is where they're saying Yob was at. Which is not what Yahuwah said Yob was at. 
He just said, go ahead and try him. Job even says, judge me, judge me, judge me. Who says nothing to him about judgment? All the way through the end. Except for, you're not the potter. Well, he doesn't use the word potter. Except, but were you were there when I did this? And were you there? And he makes He makes very well indication, very good indication that you're not the potter. Okay? So once we come to that realization, that all this repenting and obeying, which is absolutely something we must do, and walk according to him, not contrary to him. So when we get to these places where these things are just at the point where they're just worked out in our lives, not that there will never be a sin, I'm not saying that again, I'm not saying that. But we get to this point that Yahuwah brings us to because he's the potter and we're the clay. We must realize he's the potter and we're the clay. Praise Yahuwah. Praise Yahuwah. Each of these six distresses, uh, seven evils, um, should bring out something more than for each and every one of us to just, oh, we're going to be saved from that. What does this look like? And is it always a spirit, a physical picture? Or might or might not be true in the physical, but it will be true in the, in the spiritual, in the kingdom, for eternal life. Because we have allowed him, and he's going to do it anyway. Um, do we have a choice? We do have a choice. But he already knows what we're choosing. And so the wheel of life, the potter can do whatever he wants with his vessels. We are, our job, quote unquote job, is to be so familiar with the truth. But when the counterfeit looms on the horizon, we recognize it immediately. That we would not be deceived, that we would be warriors under Yahuwah's vote, who was a man of battle. We would be in the family of heads and not curse Aloha, not curse his name, but walk in love. Praise Yahuwah. We thank you, Father, that we can take bits and pieces of your scripture, put them all together in context with the, with the section, with the chapter, with an entire book, and with the rest of your word, Father, to see what you are telling us to do and to not to do, to speak and to not to speak. That you would bring us to the place where our words, Yahuwah, match our actions, Yahuwah. That we realize we are the clay. That we know that you are the potter. And we allow that to be so. Because you can do whatever you want with the clay on your wheel. Yahuwah, we beseech you that we would be your people. We truly would be your people on Mount Zion in the first resurrection. And you be our Aloha for eternal life. To eat from the tree of life. And that all would be tobe again. Praise Yahuwah, hallelujah. In your name, hallelujah, Yahuwah. Thank you, Father. Praise Yahuwah. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Praise Yahuwah. Hallelujah.